And from the national headquarters of RT America, hello again, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez. Yesterday on this very newscast, we were the very first to tell you that Israeli military jets have been doing flyovers into Lebanon airspace. That's serious, because it very well may be in violation of several UN resolutions. Well, today, it does appear that this story may be escalating with concerns that if it becomes a military conflict, it could end up dragging Iranian-backed Shia militias from the war in Syria next door. Here is what former Pentagon official Michael Malouf told us yesterday, for those of you who didn't see this. While I was there, yeah. uh, they were overflying Beirut and all of Lebanon, probably doing reconnaissance, to, in total violation of UN resolutions. And yet, they, uh, Israel claims that building these tunnels is a violation of the same resolution, of the, the resolution that ended the 34-day the uh, 2006 yeah. uh, fight. Here is what is now being reported just today by the Jerusalem Post. Quote, Israel is now asking the United Nations Security Council to reconvene at its behest, at Israel's behest. What Israel apparently wants is uh, permission to go after Hezbollah's tunnels. We understand that. Let me go to the wall, though, and try and put together for you this whole scenario so that you can better understand the area that we are uh, talking about. And this is it right here. So th this is the area of contention which includes the borders of Israel and Lebanon, and as you see behind me, Syria as well. And obviously that's important. The fear, of course, being that somehow the fighting in Syria could potentially jump the border, especially now that Israel is being so aggressive regarding Hezbollah. Here is what Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, his name is Danny Dannon, this is what he said today. Israel, he says, will expose Hezbollah's terror operations and its blindfolding of the Lebanese government. He goes on to say, we must use every measure against Hezbollah to silence it and destroy its military. Now, le let me show you the uh, tunnels that are in question here. Let's go in a little tighter. You see those circles that we've prepared there for you? Now, this is interesting. This map that we're sharing with you right now, and these, this area that I'm pointing to, this map was put out not by Israel. We got this today from Hezbollah their public relations arm or whatever it's called, showing where they say Israel has now been searching and marking and booby-trapping tunnels. Israel is using heavy drills and bulldozers, but many fear this is a prelude to another war with Lebanon, or really part two, for those of you who know or are familiar with the Lebanon War of 2006. Hezbollah boasts today that it won that war and is said to be prepared for another go. So tonight, we here will reveal exclusive information about what Israel intends to do, which could bring in even more carnage to the Middle East and undoubtedly could involve both the United States and Russia. I'm Rick Sanchez, and this is RT America, where it is time to do news again. We begin, though, with the question of whether Israel is about to strike Lebanon because the circumstances seem to be ripe for some kind of aggression. So much so that even the United States, who usually asks how high when Israel says jump, has rejected today Israel's request to impose sanctions on Lebanon, no doubt fearing that it could be dragged into a potential quagmire, as we had described. Do they fear the inevitable? Are we headed for another Israel-Lebanon conflict that could this time be much more dangerous from a global perspective? We're going to address all of that here in just a minute. But first, I need to tell you that the U.S. did actually act on more sanctions today, but not against Lebanon, not at Israel's behest. It will come as no surprise to you who the target is. Iran. Here is Secretary of State Mike Pompeo at the United Nations. We risk the security of our people if Iran continues stocking up on ballistic missiles. We risk, we risk escalation of conflict in the region if we fail to restore, restore deterrence. And we convey to all other malign actors that they too can defy the Security Council with impunity if we do nothing. Our goodwill gestures have been futile. Futile in correcting the Iranian regime's reckless missile activity and its destructive behaviors. No nation can dispute that Iran is in open defiance 
of UN Security Council Resolution 2231. Joining us now is uh, former Pentagon official Michael Malouf with exclusive information about Israel's intentions in Lebanon. Uh, Michael, thanks so much again for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, what have your sources told you that we need to know tonight? Uh, just today I was informed that the Israeli government is informing officials, I won't say from, uh, to where, but that uh, there is an intention by, by Israel to attack. You, you can't share with us who the sources are, I understand. No. Okay, we respect that. Um, is this a made, somebody who represents a major government? Yes. Somebody who Israel then turned to and said, we need to let you know that we might be doing this. Yes, that it, that there will be a day. They, they told the, uh, this government that, uh, uh, that, that, that this will be occurring. What does it usually mean when Israel tells a foreign government of their potential intentions? It, it generally signifies that there is a, a, indeed a, a determination to go ahead. Already the Israeli government has announced that, it, that uh, uh, dealing, with, dealing with Hezbollah, particularly on, the, on, the, uh, uh, on refining the missiles for more accuracy, mm -hmm. is a red line. And we're seeing this crescendo building more and more uh, on the on the Israeli side, and 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 once again, as I told you yesterday, there have been uh, continuous flyovers of of, of Beirut uh, in very recent days by by the Israelis. So, and you made the point that then both sides would be in violation of the UN yes, resolution. Yes. Let me ask you a question about this. That's mm -hmm. right now they're saying they're only going in because of the tunnels. But if this mm -hmm. thing does escalate, mm -hmm. if there is a round two mm -hmm. of the 2006 war between mm -hmm. Israel and Lebanon, how would it be different this time and to whose advantage? Well, it, any I think what's happening here is that uh, Israel is looking to uh, for provocation. They are they are testing where they might be able to go in. Uh, certainly, building tunnels is 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 a violation. But at the same time, so are flyovers. What they're hoping to uh, extract from Hezbollah, I think, is a reaction. That then will be a basis for them then to for the Israelis then to move in. But but if they do go in mm -hmm. again, again, I mean, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm asking these questions is mm -hmm. because, as as a citizen of the United States, heck, as mm -hmm. a citizen of the world, I would be concerned mm -hmm. if there's sure. another type of clon uh, conflagration in that sure. area. Um, we're seeing what's going on in Syria. Yep. We're seeing the Iranian reaction. Sure. We're seeing the possibility of the United States getting involved. Mm -hmm. Which this would this be a bigger deal? And if so, how big and yeah, why? Even even a small event could. Absolutely, cause a catastrophic uh, event within in the Middle East, and and my sources uh, are telling me that it would. Uh, they're very concerned that the entire region, entire Middle East region, will erupt as a, even with the smallest episode. Okay, but who, 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 for example, would jump in on the side of Hezbollah, for example? Who? Uh, I'm hearing this time it, it will not just be Shia out of out of uh, Syria or within Lebanon or and just Hezbollah. It will be Shia from all the countries of the region. We're talking. I, I've heard terms of a million descending upon Israel if that occurs. Why would Israel, who is still dealing with its own issues with Hamas? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, in Gaza, mm -hmm. want to go into something like this, dealing with Hezbollah, who, mm -hmm. by the way, seems much more uh, powerful than Hamas. Oh, it is. It's 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 even more powerful than the Lebanese army. It's I mean, it, and it's battle hardened from right. all of its experiences. It will. It will. Um, I think that we're going to we're going to see that uh, they will they will react and respond very very uh, rapidly. The United. I think what the what the Israelis are attempting to do. Is drag in the United States on this because they want U.S. involvement in this as part because the Israelis mm. feel that, th in fact, they told the official that I spoke to today that uh, uh, Iran and Hezbollah uh, are are contemplating attacking Israel, which is not which is historically not going to be, be the in, case. In fairness, though, Israel has every right to defend sure. itself sure. if somebody is building tunnels sure. into their territory, right? Sure. Sure. And if that's what they're saying, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. It, it, it's, it's, it's whether they escalate beyond that, right? Well, and, and we've seen this happen before with Netanyahu going to uh, meet with Pompeo in Brussels the, uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. We also then saw that, uh, that, this, that there's a certain parallel with, with what occurred just before uh, the, uh, Israel attacked 
Syria's uh, nuclear uh, uh, reactor uh, in, during the Bush administration. Uh, Netanyahu went and visited high-level officials. There is a precarious situation going on. Final question, because I'm being told to wrap up, and I know mm -hmm. this is very important, though. Netanyahu's damaged right now Correct. politically because Correct. of the criminal investigation right. going on. Do you see that as a reason for him to be more apt to maybe be I, a little more dangerous at the time? I, I, th I think we're seeing uh, him uh, being cornered, and uh, because of his domestic situation, we're basically seeing, I believe, a, and this is my personal opinion, a tail wagging the dog. Michael Maloof, um, really interesting information. I'm glad you shared with us uh, this, and uh, let's certainly hope it doesn't happen. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. You. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one of a kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.